Hello, everybody. So I'm re-recording the first uh, 15 minutes or so of this because um, while I was writing on a shared whiteboard, I was not actually sharing my screen to the Zoom call. And so instead of any math that you all could see, uh, there was just kind of a grainy close-up of my face uh, talking about math. Uh, so if you'd like to be stared at by a grainy close-up of my face, uh, just pop on over to my personal Zoom meeting at 344-982-8650. I offer 15 minute, 30 minute, and one hour stair sessions, uh, as well as a 12 hour Iron Man stair session for those truly interested in being stared at by me. Um, with that said, let's get back to the math. So in the previous talk, uh, we, we discussed several different ways to describe a cofiber sequence. Um, the first way is we said that it's a homotopy co-limit. So it's a universal, uh, it's a universal homotopy coherent diagram that looks like this. Okay. Uh, so what this says is that um, given a map from X to Y, the homotopy cofiber Z is an object filling in this diagram. Um, so it's equipped with a map from Y and a null homotopy of the, uh, of the composition of that map with a map from X. Um, so in order to, and it's the, it's the universal object and is the initial object in, in, uh, in some homotopy coherence sense in, in some category of, of these diagrams. Okay. Um, so uh, this is sort of using the full strength of the definition of homotopy co-limit. Um, and in order to even talk about this, we need to use some of the higher structure in our model category. So we need to use the fact that there aren't just sets of maps between objects, but really sort of spaces. Um, and in particular, we need to talk about some specific null homotopy of this uh, uh, of this inclusion of X into Y in order to make this definition work. Okay, so this is this is the first definition. Um, the second definition is, is that we said, instead of thinking about this uh, in this way, we can think of it as just a sequence of maps where the cofiber uh, Z is equipped with a coaction of the suspension of x. So in other words, there's a map from z to z coproduct with the suspension of x, um, satisfying some co-unitality and co-associativity properties. Uh, so this alone does not, does not tell you whether this alone does not tell you whether or not your sequence is a cofiber sequence. Um, and so in order to use a definition like this, we have to specify um, which uh, diagrams of this type are cofiber sequences. And one of the ways that we can do that is we can say, well, we know what a cofiber sequence is supposed to be when we're working with a cofibration of cofiber objects. So if we start with a cofibration between two cofiber objects, which I'm indicating with this superscript C, um, then the cofiber should just be the honest, or the, sorry, the homotopy cofiber should be the same as the honest cofiber, the quotient of BC by AC. Um, and this is naturally equipped with a, with a coaction of the suspension of A. Um, so then we'll say uh, that in general, a cofiber sequence is, is any diagram of this form that's equivalent to a diagram of this form, that is weakly equivalent to some diagram of this form. Um, and then finally, we might recognize that the, the important uh, bit of this coaction is, is really the map from Z to uh, the suspension of X. So as a matter of fact, um, the co-unitality, let me write this over here. So the, the co-unitality of this map um, implies that the composition like this uh, to the map that folds everything down to Z is just the identity map on Z. 
moreover, if we're working in a category like spectra, um, then this uh, co-product is actually going to be equivalent to the product. So this is true in any stable model category, as, as I'll say later on in the, in the talk. Um, so that means that specifying the map from Z to this co-product is really just the same as specifying two maps, one to Z and one to the suspension. And since we've already given the one to Z, the only interesting data is contained in the, in the map from Z to the suspension of X. OK, um, again, this doesn't really work in, a, in an arbitrary pointed model category, but it does work in an arbitrary stable model category. Um, so, so what that means is that we can reconsider this co-action as, as just coming from a map from Z to the suspension of X. And we can think of our cofiber sequence as just a sequence of maps like this, which again is equivalent to uh, an honest cofiber sequence coming from a cofibration of cofibered objects. So there's something very um, there's something very interesting about this. As I said, sort of the real definition of this concept is a higher categorical one. It uses the the um, some of the higher structure in the spaces of maps in your model category. Uh, but somehow these these other two notions uh, really sort of make sense at the level of the homotopy category. Okay, so. Um, so, so these, these maps here uh, really only need to be homotopy classes of maps. They, their composition has to be null homotopic. And, um, and this co-action, again, can be defined at the level of the homotopy category. So, uh, so this, this turns out to be a pretty useful concept is that there's a way of thinking about, um, about cofiber sequences uh, as some structure that, that exists on the homotopy category. And this is where the notion of triangulated category comes from. Um, and again, I'll be getting to this later on in the talk. OK, so um, from now on, I want to work in, in a stable model category with the following property. I want to work in a pointed model category. where suspension is invertible. And as a matter of fact, the, the inverse to suspension should be, ooh, should be loops. OK, as I'll say later on, these are called stable model categories. Um, these, these imply a couple uh, useful properties. Um, one of the main ones is that, uh, as we saw in the last talk, this means that any set of homotopy classes of maps between two objects is an abelian group. OK, for example, this, this automatically implies that y is actually a double loop space. And so, um, so y is a, an abelian group object in the homotopy category. Um, it also implies that these these Pupa sequences, which um, which we've talked about, are long exact sequences of abelian groups. Okay, so now let's recall that. If we have a cofiber sequence, then we get an associated um, long exact sequence by mapping it into any object W.
So this is log exact for any w. So now what we'll show is that in, um, in a stable setting where suspension is invertible, cofiber sequences actually have the dual exactness property as well. Sorry, I should have said that this is a long exact sequence. So, um, so we also have that this sequence is a long exact sequence. Okay, so here's the proof. Um, first of all, we remember that these cofiber sequences can be continued to the right. Um, and not only is, is Z equivalent to the cofiber of X to Y, but suspension X is equivalent to the cofiber of Y to Z and so on and so on. Um, so uh, it really suffices to, to check exactness at a single spot in the sequence and then um, and then use the fact that that each little sequence of three terms is a um, is a cofiber uh, to extend that argument everywhere else. Okay, so let's show exactness uh, at maps from W to Y, and I'll just do part of this. Um, so let's suppose that we have. Uh, let me name my maps first of all. Um, so let's call this F, G, H. So this is composition with F and G and H. Um, and let's suppose that we have uh, we have a map phi from W to Y, such that phi is in the kernel of G star. So in other words, V is a map from W to Y. And when we compose with G, then the composition is, um, is null homotopic. OK, so what we can do with this, um, let's start writing the cofiber sequence on the bottom here. Because the composition of phi with G is null homotopic, uh, it extends over the cone on W. Okay, so it, there exists a map from the cone on W to Z uh, that makes this diagram commute. Um, and uh, This, this map from W to the cone on W also has a cofiber, which is the suspension of W. And we can continue the sequences like this. Okay, and so now since we have this commutative square here, um, there's a map between their cofibers, uh, between the cofiber of W to cone on W and G making the whole diagram commute. Um, and this exists by naturality of the cofiber. So if we think of the cofiber as the homotopy co-limit of a diagram, then saying it makes the whole diagram commute um, is the same as uh, saying that it's a map of uh, homotopy coherent diagrams or something. Okay, so there's also a map like this. Um, so if we call this map uh, C, then um, so then we have this map C from suspension W to suspension X uh, with the property that um, that it commutes. Let's see, this is the identity. This is suspension F. Uh, I think this is actually minus suspension F, and this is uh, this is phi over here. Um, 
Maybe this is also supposed to be minus one. Um, so, right. And so then the point is that since suspension is invertible, um, C is actually the suspension of some map uh, from W to X. So there's a map suspension minus one C from W to X. Uh, which makes the diagram commute if we put it over here. And this shows that our original map phi is in the image of maps from W to X, uh, which is what we wanted to show, okay? Um, So this is this is half of showing exactness at this one place, and uh, and you can think about the other half as an exercise. Um, okay, so uh, this is kind of the main step in proving that cofiber sequences uh, in a stable model category are fiber sequences. Okay. For anyone who actually came to this talk, by the way, I'm a little unhappy with the with the proof that I gave. Um, so I'm I'm saying it a bit uh, differently in, uh, this time. Um, so uh, so here's what we're going to do. Um, so let's say that we have a cofiber sequence um, like this. What we would like to do is we'd like to compare it with a cofiber sequence that has, sorry, we'd like to compare it with a fiber sequence that has some of the same terms. So let's define F to be the fiber of this map uh, H from G from Z to the suspension X. Um, and then continuing this fiber sequence to the left, we have loop suspension X, um, but uh, this, is, this is equivalent to X. Okay, so there's actually a natural um, unit map from X to uh, to loop suspension X um, that in this stable setting is just the same as the identity. Um, and uh, likewise, we can write the identity maps right here. So, um, so the hard part here is is showing that uh, there's a map from this uh, this top cofiber sequence to this bottom fiber sequence uh, that makes everything commute. Um, and unfortunately, I think that this is this is actually a technical step um, that has to be done, and I'm not going to do it. Uh, so if if you're interested in this, you can look in uh, in Barnes and Reutzheim um, or in Mark Hubby's model categories book uh, or similar references like this. Um, but but the point is that um, uh, given a, a given a cofiber sequence and a fiber sequence and three of these maps like this, it's always possible to fill in the fourth map. Um, so assuming that we know how to do that, um, let's then notice that uh, that we get a map of long exact sequences um, obtained by mapping everything uh, either into or out of any any space W. So for example. Um, Well, let me do the, the covariant once. Uh, so by the previous proposition, um, we've seen that this is a long exact sequence. And then in any point of model category, um, this sequence coming from a fiber sequence is long exact. And we have all these maps, uh, this one being the one that was difficult to define. Um, and so this is a map of long exact sequences of abelian groups. And by the five lemma, it's an isomorphism.
So by the five lemma, this is an isomorphism. Um, and it's a natural isomorphism for every W, which means that Y is equivalent to F, which is exactly what we wanted to show. OK. Um, so uh, right. So at this point, the, uh, the video from the original Zoom meeting picks up again. So um, I will see you in the past. So loops is, is inverse to suspension. Um, such a, the, the homotopy category of, of a stable model category is naturally enriched over abelian groups like we saw. Um, so for any X and Y maps from X to Y is an abelian group. Um, and actually, it's more commonly, it, it, it's more common to think about this as a graded abelian group. Um, so, uh, so often we'll think about the set of graded homotopy classes of maps from X to Y. Um, which is defined uh, as follows. The, the set of degree N um, maps from X to Y is maps from suspension N X into Y, or equivalently, it's maps from X into suspension minus N Y. Um, So this is a graded abelian group. So, um, so for example, uh, if we if we talk about spectra again, um, and we think about uh, maps from the sphere spectrum to some other spectrum X, then the degree n part of this is uh, is the same as maps from S n into X, which is pi n X, and likewise if you have um, suspension spectrum of some point in space, mapping into a spectrum E, which you think of as representing a homology theory, uh, then the degree N part of this is, I believe E, the degree minus N cohomology of X. And I guess I should say reduced cohomology because um, we're talking about spaces, or point in spaces, I mean. Okay, so this this grading is a, is a natural thing that um, that's, we're sort of used to from, from other parts of algebraic topology. Um, another thing that can, that, that can be proved uh, is that in a, um, in a stable model category, uh, finite sums or finite coproducts are finite product. So another way of saying this is that um, you have a map from the coproduct of X and Y uh, to the product of X and Y in any category where these objects exist. And, and in this case, it's a, this map is always a weak, a weak equivalence. So um, this is an easy consequence of the fact that cofiber sequences and fiber sequences agree because you can represent both of these objects um, as, as inside cofiber sequences or fiber sequences. Um, so first of all, there's a cofiber sequence uh, like this. And likewise, there's a fiber sequence like this.
um, and uh, but cofiber sequences are fiber sequences, so um, these these really must be the same sequence. So this equals this, this equals this, and um, you know if you can continue this to the right, because which you can do because it's a cofiber sequence, then um, you get you get something that you can apply the five lemma to to show that that this is also an isomorphism, or sorry, uh, also a, a weak equivalence. I mean. Okay. Quick question. Yeah. Sorry. So you've been uh, when you've been writing homotopy classes of maps. Um, mm -hmm. Homotopies. Homotopy classes of maps is only defined for fiber, cofiber, and objects, right? Like it, it's defined for every object, but the way that it's defined is you replace you replace them with fiber, and cofiber, okay. and objects, and take and take homotopy classes. Okay, that's what I figured. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Yeah. Any other questions, by the way? Okay. Um, cool. So, uh, by the way, let me see. So, so, so I've I've been talking about spectra as kind of the main example of all of this stuff, but there's there's at least one other good um, example which which um, we should sort of continuously keep in mind. Um, as, as we think about these abstract properties. Uh, and this is the example of chain complexes over a ring. Um, so what we've said is that this has a model structure called the projective model structure. Um, where the cofibrations are maps of chain complexes, uh, which are inclusions with degree-wise projective co-kernel. The vibrations are the surjections and the weak equivalences are maps from uh, maps from the maps from C to D that induce a, a homology isomorphism. So um, in this in this model category, um, there's there's a model for suspension which is just shift everything up one degree, and and uh, and it's clear. I guess when I said chain complexes, I I, I should specify. I mean unbounded chain complexes here. Um, so uh, so it's it's clear that shifting up a degree is um, is a an invertible um, endo functor of the category. So, so that model of suspension is very clearly invertible, which is why this is a, a stable model category. Um, and for example, this this previous uh, statement that we just proved um, that finite coproducts are finite products is is something that we're all um, very familiar with um, about chain complexes. Uh, this follows from the even more basic statement that R modules, um, the category of R modules is an abelian category. And so in particular, finite, finite coproducts of R modules are, are the same as finite products. Um, I should say, well, maybe I'll, I'll get back to that at the, at the, end, of the, at the end of the talk. Um, oh, yeah, quick quick question here. Yeah. 
the, the projective co-kernel condition? I just haven't really thought about this. Is this mm -hmm. uh, stringent or is this common or can you always do this for easy? What, what's the question? Uh, so coming up with inclusions that have a projective co-kernel, like is this automatic for chain complexes or do you have to actually do oh. something? How, like how do you, given a map, how do you replace it by a, um, by a, by a co-fibration? Yeah, yeah, so or even do you have to? So I don't remember any of the formulas, but I will tell you that if you look up um, words like mapping cylinder or mapping cone, there are, there are, um, there are some pretty explicit uh, ways to do this in, in individual cases. Um, so, so for example, uh, if you want to calculate the, the cofiber of some map of chain complexes, um, you can do it using this, using these model category methods by finding, um, you know, finding an equivalent cofibration of cofibrant chain complexes and taking the, the quotient. Uh, but there's also some, some definition of it, which looks something like this. Um, there's, there's a chain complex, which I think looks like uh, in the nth degree, it's um, something like. I think I've seen this. Yeah, it's like C plus D shift one or something. Yeah, exactly. And then there's there's some differential that that like gives us the right the right homotopy type. Um, so this is a. I mean this. This, this sort of idea kind of predates the theory of model categories quite a bit. And it's, it's like an extremely explicit way, way to do these constructions. Um, I don't know, does that address your question? Yeah, I think, so I know what to go look up. So that's 99% okay. <laughs> of the way there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so somehow, I mean, part of, the, part of the reason that people started thinking about model categories at all was, was um, that there was this very well-developed ideas of, of homological algebra and they wanted to do similar things for, for non-abelian settings um, like spaces or rings or things like that. Um, okay, so what was I gonna say? Right, okay, so, um, so I, now I wanna introduce the notion of triangulated category. And the idea is that this is exactly the structure that you see on the homotopy category of a stable model category. So if you want to talk about, say, spectra, but you don't want to go through the trouble of setting up actual uh, models for the spectra or, or talking about cofibrations and fibrations, um, you can get a lot done just by, just by working inside, the, uh, inside the, the homotopy category of spectra. Um, so. So this is the natural structure on the homotopy category of M, where M is a stable model category. So the definition is um, we have some uh, some category T, which is additive. Um, in other words, it's enriched over abelian groups. We have a suspension functor from T to T, which is supposed to be an additive self-equivalence of T. Um, and we have some class of, of sequences in map, of maps in T, which are basically supposed to be cofiber sequences. So um, there's a class of what we'll call exact triangles. Uh, 
And these are certain diagrams. of this form in T. So it's a sequence of three maps where the target of the last map is the, the source of the, of the first map. OK. Um, and so these are supposed to satisfy some, some properties. Uh, so first of all, every Every map from X to Y can be extended to some exact triangle. Um, let me write uh, triangle for exact triangle. Um, Uh, let me add one more thing to my definition of T. So, so uh, T should have a zero object. Which we'll just call zero. Um, and so for any X, We have this sequence, um, which is a triangle, an exact triangle. Um, the exact triangles are closed under isomorphisms. Um, we can shift exact triangles backwards and forwards. So in other words, if we're given an exact triangle like this, or sorry, if we're given a sequence like this, then this is an exact triangle, if and only if it's, it's shift, uh, which is defined to be this, is an exact triangle. Next, there's a, there's a version of the five lemma. So if we're given some diagram um, Sorry, this is not really a version of the five lemma. This is a, this is a version of the universal property of the, the cofiber of a map. Um, Right, but so the, the, the axiom says that um, given a diagram like this where both rows are exact triangles, then there exists a map uh, filling in the diagram. And finally, th um, there's something called the octahedral axiom, uh, which gets a special name because it's complicated. Um, And, uh, and what this is supposed to, to tell you about is um, if you're thinking about exact triangles as, as representing cofiber sequences, it tells you how the cofiber sequences of, um, of some composable maps, sorry, it tells you how the cofibers of some com composable maps relate to the cofiber of their composition. Um, so the way that I like to draw this looks like this. Uh, So let's say we have some, some sequence of composable maps from X to Y to Z. And their composition. So this is not an exact triangle. This is just, this is just two maps in their composition. Um, so we can take the cofiber of F. In other words, all I mean by this is something fitting into some exact triangle with F. Uh, We can take the cofiber of G
and we can take the cofiber of GF. And the octahedral axiom says that these, um, that these cofibers fit into an exact triangle of their own. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, we have to give a little bit more data to make all this like, make sense. So there's this third map in the exact triangle going to suspension of the cofiber of F. Um, and let's see. And there should be a map from suspension Y to this, which is uh, the suspension of whatever this map is. I think you wrote suspension Z instead of suspension X. Uh, yes, thank you. That map, yeah. Right. So, um, right. So the, the content of the axiom, uh, the content of the axiom is that if these, if, if these three uh, sequences starting with F, G, and GF are all exact, um, then this fourth sequence uh, going from cone on F to cone on GF to cone on G to suspension cone on F is also an exact triangle. Um, yeah, so apparently if you draw this the right way, then it looks like an octahedron, but I, I that's something that's beyond me. Um, okay, so this is the definition of a triangulated category. Um, so to summarize, we have this, we have an additive category, we have an additive endofunctor uh, called suspension, which is a self-equivalence. And we have some exact triangles which are supposed to behave like cofiber sequences. And then the axioms say in what ways do they behave like cofiber sequences. Um, so uh, the examples that, that anyone cares about are the homotopy category of M for any stable model category M. And in particular, we should keep in mind these key examples of the homotopy category of spectra and the homotopy category of unbounded chain complexes over a ring. Okay, um, so let's let's write down a few basic properties. So first of all, given any exact triangle like this, then um, the compositions in the triangle are null homotopic. So GF equals zero and HG equals zero. Um, so the proof is for, by, by shifting it, it suffices to prove that GF equals zero. Um, and to do that, uh, what we mean by zero is it factors through, through the zero object, right? So we have to exhibit some factorization of this composition through the zero object. Um, So here is our original exact triangle. Um, and then we also said that for any X, there's an exact triangle involving X, um, the identity map and the zero object. And so this is one, one version of that, of that exact triangle. Sorry, let me just write one here. Okay, so now this diagram commutes, um, which means that there exists a map like this. Um, next, the, the analog of these, of these um, long ex exact sequences of homotopy classes of maps um, also follows uh, just from these axioms. 
So given some exact triangle, And given some object W, um, sorry, give me one second here. So given some exact triangle and some object W, um, you can write down this sequence. And the claim is that it's an exact sequence of abelian groups. Uh, and likewise, the dual sequence, um, where you're mapping into W, is also exact. Um, and by the way, since we can shift these triangles to the right and left, we actually, um, starting from, from any diagram like this, we end up with a long exact sequence, um, which, you know, looks incredibly similar to the long exact sequences on, on homotopy and homology groups that we're familiar with. Uh, okay, so here's the proof. Um, and this is, this is really pretty similar. Well, let me just prove one part of this, um, because the, the whole thing is, is pretty similar to, um, some proofs that I gave, uh, earlier. So, um, so given some map from, from W to Y, uh, given some map phi from W to Y, um, with the property that, uh, Composing it down to Z gives you the zero map. So saying that the composition is the zero map is, is another way of saying that it factors through the zero object, which means that there's um, uh, that there's a factorization like this. And now what you can do um, is you can map in the the triangle from W to zero to the triangle from Y to Z um, And so by one of these triangulated category axioms, this map exists in the middle. So this is really basically identical to the, to the proof that I gave uh, earlier that fiber sequences are cofiber sequences. Um, and the, the dual version is, is similar to this. Um, so using this, it's possible to prove a version of the five lemma, which says that uh, if you have a map, if you have a, a map between two exact triangles, so if both of the rows here are exact, and uh, two of the, uh, what should I name them? Phi. C and G, uh, and this would be the suspension of phi. So if two of if two of these maps are um, are isomorphisms, then so is the third. Oh, 
Okay. Um, and this is actually, given the previous proposition, this is just an immediate consequence of the five lemma. Um, so, uh, so the point is that you look at um, maps from W into the various uh, objects in this diagram, um, and you get a map between two long exact sequences, which you can apply the five lemma to. Okay. So again, all, all of this stuff is, is are things that we knew already in spectra. Um, but the point of saying it this way is that uh, it, it can be proved from this, this kind of small set of axioms, which really just have to do with the homotopy category of spectra. Um, the last thing I think I wanted to say uh, was something about, um, about graded maps of uh, chain complexes. And this is sort of maybe tangentially related, but I was thinking about the, um, the fact that these things are graded abelian groups. Uh, so this is maybe an example of what the grading means. So in the homotopy category of chain complexes over R, um, uh, you can consider there's, there's an embedding from, from R modules into this. So we can take two R modules A and B and regard them as chain complexes, which are just concentrated in degree zero. And then we can ask, what's the set of graded homotopy classes of maps from A into B? Okay, so the way that we um, compute this is uh, since we're working inside a model category, we need to replace um, we need to replace uh, the source with a cofibrin object and the target with a fibrin object. Um, in the projective model structure that I described earlier, every object is fibrin, but uh, to be cofibrin, you need to be a chain complex of projectives. Um, so a cofibrant replacement of A is the same as a projective resolution of A. Um, so this is a chain complex of projectives with the property that, um, that its homology that, Sorry, this is a chain complex of projectives with a map to A, which induces an isomorphism on homology. Um, and so now maps from A into B without the grading is the same as um, maps of chain complexes from this projective resolution into B uh, mod homotopy. So so if this is what P looks like, then we're thinking about maps from this into B. Um, where B is the chain complex that's B in degree zero and zero in every other degree. Okay, so the, the, the data of this map is really just given by a map from, um, from P0 mod P1 into B. So this is a map of R modules from P0 mod P1 into B, mod some homotopy relation. Um, but actually in this case, the homotopy relation is, is, is trivial. Um, so, uh, so this is really just the same as maps of R modules from A into B. Okay, so that's what the degree zero part of this of this set of homotopy classes are. Um, if you if you think along the same lines, but instead shift B uh, up or down by some amount, 
Well, first of all, if we shift it down, it's pretty clear that all maps um, uh, that all maps from this projective resolution to to B. But, sorry, if you shift B down, then all of the diagrams like this have to be zero. Um, if you shift B up, then uh, what you're essentially thinking about is the homology of the chain complex of maps from P into B. So in general, and I think the right grading here is minus N. So this is supposed to be the degree N homology of the chain complex of maps from P into B, which is the same as X to N of A into B for N greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so again, this, this these notions from homotopical algebra are kind of generalizing older ones from homological algebra, in this case, the, the uh, in this case, the notion of X group. Okay, so um, that's all I have to say for today. I think I'm gonna stop there. Um, and let me stop the recording.